Hello world, this is the third annual CS50 Fair at Yale University. I'm here with my colleague and college friend, Benedict. Hi there, so welcome again to the third uh, CS50 Fair at Yale. And we are at the Peabody Museum of Natural History here at Yale. Uh, because we actually in CS50 have a long and storied history and as you'll see from uh, some of the exhibits in the museum it in fact goes all the way back to the time of the dinosaurs and we've brought it forward over many years so successfully that now we're up to the present day with some awesome projects from our students we have about 120 presenting and uh, so we're really excited to have you all here and come see what they've produced Hey guys, uh, this is CS50. I'm Idris, and welcome to the CS50 Fair at Yale. I am uh, glad uh, to introduce Joe and Max. Um, they are kind enough to, to show us our, their project uh, today. Um, so guys, could you guys just walk us through uh, your project? Yeah, so uh, I'll lead you guys through a little demo here. So uh, here you can see the coordinate axes. So what we did is a 3D function grapher, and here you can enter in a function of x and y. So for example, here's a plane. Um, and we'll just we can go ahead and graph that. And while it renders, uh, you can choose the x and y ranges as well as the number of divisions. So uh, we chose a relatively small amount of divisions here. So the graph looks a little grainy. And um, basically, a small amount of divisions means uh, a small amount of points. And how we how we created our services was with a cloud of points, basically. So um, basically, it just graphs a small amount of points. You can zoom in or out here. Um, and drag around on the screen to change the perspective. So, yeah. Ooh, okay, cool. Uh, and what did, what did you guys do this in? Uh, so we did this in a library called 3JS. Uh, we used mainly JavaScript. Uh, we also used a little bit of Python to get a Flask app running, um, but it was mainly JavaScript. Um, we also implemented the math.js library in order to parse the x and y functions so that our graphic could have some utility for uh, math functionality. Ooh, okay. Well, what do you think were the biggest challenges you faced in this project? Um, I think getting the, um, the graphs to render in a way that made them look like smooth surfaces was a really hard challenge. Um, we initially wanted to make um, the graphs sort of tiles between points, but that proved too challenging and too long, took too long to render. So we just tried to simplify it by um, utilizing the point cloud feature in 3JS, and it worked out really well. OK, OK. Can you, can you guys show us like a, a cool graph? Sure. Um, um, I think we have preset. We have a cone and a half sphere. This is a cone here. Um, this is like a cone. Oh, wow. For like half sphere right there. And then you, you can use the camera functions to. Um, right, these are some hard coded perspectives. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, that looks awesome. And, and we really envisioned this project to have um, some meaning, especially for like Math 120 students, which we're currently in, yeah. uh, because there isn't really that reliable of software out there uh, to graph functions. Uh -huh. So that was the rationale for uh -huh. our project. Uh -huh. OK, cool, cool. Um, do you guys have any idea of uh, you know, something you learned in this project that wasn't covered in the main course or something that you built upon um, by doing this? So like something that wasn't like wasn't covered. Yeah. Um, I think the sheer amount of uh, helper libraries we needed mm. to include. Through the libraries and the documentation and all that. Yeah. I, I think we didn't realize how much we were helped along by um, the source code that we were given in the P sets. So we felt like we kind of do had to do everything on our own, <laughs> which I guess it's life. So. <laughs> Are you guys proud? Oh, we created? Yeah, yeah. We, we were really happy with what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Um, could I could I put in a function or something yeah, here? Sure, to sure. Just test it out. So, for example, if I put in like uh, I don't know, x um, 
So these are like the, the base functions you guys have? No, oh, these are the ones we've already grabbed. Okay, okay. So the functionality of that is once you grab a function, it appears on the left function menu, and you can click or unclick to have it appear again okay. um, on the graph. That, so if I now click this. Left click. Yeah. Left click? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, 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 that's. Oh, go. man. And then I could just. Yep. Drag right, the gra yeah. Oh, wow. You can scroll to zoom in or out as well. The, uh -huh. the two finger in and out. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, man. This is just visually so cool. Oh, wow. Okay. So, any, any final takeaways from this project? Um. We were talking to some people earlier, and they were saying like how this could have some sort of statistical functionality. So maybe we could extend that in the future. You never know. Uh huh. So uh -huh. we were really happy with what we made, and uh, uh -huh. yeah, we're really proud. Uh huh. Very good. Okay. So this was CS50. Let's check out some more projects. Hi there. My name is Xu Chen, and I'm a sophomore in Pearson College and I'm a course assistant for CS50. I actually took CS50 last year, so this is such an amazing opportunity. I'm here with three awesome girls, and they made an amazing project, so do you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Sure, I'm Greta, and I'm a first year in Styles College. I'm Emily, and I'm also a first year in Styles. And I'm Catherine, and I'm also a first year in Styles. Cool, so can you tell us more about your project and maybe give us a demo? Yeah, so basically we made a Yale-themed emoji um, for the iMessage app extension, and we used this, um, we coded this in Swift, which we had to learn from scratch by like watching tutorials online, yeah. and we used Xcode as our ID. So yeah. um, I'm gonna give like a short demo of it. Do so you wanna like do it? Sure. <laughs> All right. So this is the app itself that you would like download from the App Store, um, which has a text field in it, but doesn't really contain the meat of the app's functionality. Uh, for that, we go to Messenger. Uh, let's say we want to text David J. Malin. <laughs> um, you can pull up the keyboard and then use the globe icon to toggle. And here we are at our keyboard that we designed. Um, <laughs> this is so cool. So let's say we want to send David J. Malin, I don't know. Peter Salovey? Uh, yeah, we want to send him Peter Salovey with a mustache. <laughs> uh, we get a nice little message saying our emoji's been copied. And now we can paste it into the text field and send it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And um, to use this app to receive the messages, you don't have to have the app downloaded, so you can like send it to anyone you want. And basically, we use like uh, copy and paste functionality, just like Bitmoji. Awesome. What were some challenges that you encountered when you were making your app? Um, it was kind of difficult because none of us had experience with Swift before. Mm -hmm. And in this past, we went over like C and Java. But right. um, after watching tutorials, it was uh, much easier. Cool. And how did you decide on Swift versus an Android app? Um, which uses Java? Um, All of us have Apple products, like okay. our, our yeah. phones. <laughs> so I think we probably, it's I don't know, that we're just drawn to it. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And how did you make the artwork? It looks really nice. We added it on Photoshop. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we mostly just made them in Photoshop. Um, so we found pictures and we just cut them out. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, another question I had was how is how did learning the things in CS50 help you with? Uh, getting used to a new language and working with a whole other yeah. product. Um, it was really nice in CS50 that we like every week we kind of did like a new language, so it was like um, really easy to like adapt to new languages and like relearn the syntax. So um, after just watching some tutorials, we were able to like um, learn the new um, little quirks of the new language. And as the final takeaway, what was the most enjoyable part of your experience um, with the CS50 final project? Um. Um. I <laughs> we, we, we made like a lot of progress um, on our project at the CS50 Hackathon. And that was really fun, I thought. It yeah. was just like great to like be in the community with all the Harvard right. and the Yale coders um, all working. Also, um, there were lots of TAs there, uh, or the people who were mentoring who like knew Swift, right. which was really helpful yeah. because we were kind of like branching off into uncharted territory, we yeah. felt, which after I like you for. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it was fun. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for showing us a demo Thank and you. answering the questions. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go check out the other projects downstairs. Hi, this is Varsha from CS50, and I'm here with Eric, a student. So, Eric, do you want to walk us through your project? So, I decided to do machine learning for my project. Um, I wanted to be very ambitious at first and make something that can recognize cancer images. 
but that proved to be very difficult because cancer images are written in 3D images. And so it's a little hard to teach my machine to do that as a beginner, especially. And so I wanted to move to something simpler and have it recognize handwriting. Okay. Um, specifically, I trained it to recognize the MNIST database, which is a database of handwritten uh, images. Here is some examples, like, like this. Um, and so basically what my machine can do now is if I input any uh, sample images that is handwriting, for example, this one's a five, mm -hmm. you can input something like this. And just to show you how it works, I just have to run Python, predict. Sample. What what number would you like to see? Um, six. Six. Okay, so six. This is the image for six, and then I just have to run sample six PNG, and it should with well, a ninety-seven percent accuracy tell me that my number is six. Oh wow! Yeah. So how long did this project take you? You said machine learning. Yeah. So I was very intimidated by machine learning. Um, I spent the entire Thanksgiving break taking online courses on Coursera um, and just going on YouTube and watching a lot of videos. So I would say I spent over maybe like 70 hours on this. Wow. Yeah, like 50 hours of research, um, 15 hours of debugging, <laughs> <laughs> and five hours of actually writing the code. And you're happy with the end? I am actually very happy with my project. Well, Eric, any final takeaways? Um, you know, CSUD has been a big challenge for me as someone who's never had any CS background. But I think with challenges, it kind of pushes you to always improve. And I don't know, I just really love CS50 and what I've learned and improved throughout the semester. Thank you so much. That was a great project, Eric. And Thank this you. was CS50. My name's Carter Page, and we're live here from the CS50 Fair. I'm here with Jonas Kavalowskis, and today we're going to be talking about his app, Odyssey. Jonas, tell us about your app. Yeah, thank you, Carter. So Odyssey would ideally be an app that connects freelance local tour guides to travelers everywhere. And being an international, I found that the best traveling experience I had by far were when I would be somebody randomly on the street or in a bar, and they would take me to see the real authentic part of the city, the city they love and know. So maybe they'd be really into night clubbing and we would go do that, or maybe we would go and see the restaurants that no tourist ever visits. Uh, and they're like really nice parts that the locals get to experience, not so much the travelers. And that is often left to chance, unfortunately. And me and a couple of friends figured, well, why does it have to be that way? Why not create a platform that actually makes a network for this? That sounds like um, a great idea. Let's, let's take a look at it. Yeah, absolutely. So this is meant to be just a simple, user interface that I coded using AngularJS 1 integrated with Ionic Framework. Um, and this is meant to be a user interface that we're going to be using in business pitches and we're going to be using in applications for accelerators and so on. Uh, so it's lacking in a lot of the HTML and CSS work, but if we go and see, there's some functionality <laughs> oh, This right looks here. pretty sick to me. Yeah. Okay, let's um, take a look. So first, it has this Uber-esque feel, and this mostly relies on the fact that there's other businesses trying to do something like that, but the 12, 13 businesses trying to do that like majorly in many regards. And they, like if you want to book a guide there, it's going to take you two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of the traveling in Europe takes place very last minute. Uh, it's not well organized in a sense that people take on the offers of cheap airfare providers. That's going to cost you 19 euros or so to fly to complete opposite ends of Europe. And uh, they have nothing organized and they don't really have the pre-organized option available for mm -hmm. them. So what you would do is you would toggle this button on, and this is the traveler's perspective, uh -huh. and you would have guides appear around you. Alternatively, you can do it as a list uh, and see oh, the wow. guides. If you, if you go to my profile here, you're going to have my name, some basic information about me, some pictures, you know, just to make sure that the person is not <laughs> a serial killer or something. And then you're going to have some basic metrics by which the tour guide is rated. So uh, the number of tour hours given, a star rating that uh, has been given to the guide, and then you're going to have some tickers or criteria by which you can find people with common interests. So this is all made up, but uh, yeah, and then you're going to have a little profile saying 
Um, I'm an amateur filmmaker, which means I can help you immortalize <laughs> your experience in Paris with my camera. And I would love to be your guide to Paris. And then you would have the options to message the guide, ask to meet up, or just see their suggestions and itinerary and what they would love to show you while visiting the city. Wow, uh, so this is on iOS. Do you have any plans for Android? Yeah, so this is on Ionic fr framework originally. Uh -huh. So you can easily transfer from iOS and Android. Android. Uh, unfortunately, Ionic doesn't have that crazy documentation and I sort of building this lacked resources online. So hopefully we're going to find something better suited for also teamwork. Um, so what are your plans going forward? Yeah. So we have all these calculations in the business sign largely ready. Uh -huh. uh, MPVs, we launched a little MPV and had people use the service and they really enjoyed it. Um, we launched a survey that questioned hundreds of university students back in Europe and we got overwhelming response that this is something that the market needs. Uh, so now we have two more experienced coders joined in and really crazy experienced coders, I mean. Wow, this and is a real startup 50. Yeah, <laughs> we're hopefully making it to a person of about five people and uh, we're going to be working all over next semester to launch over the summer. And actually, I'm going to use the opportunity while I'm here to advertise the shit of this. So, um, if you are experienced in app building, if you are interested in the business side, if you just want to join in and believe in this idea, do hit me up on, yeah, it's a long name, but it's jonas.kavalauskas at Yale EDU. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear any sort of feedback that you can offer. Yeah. Perfect. And sorry, I was planning to show this as well. You can see that on the phone as well. Um, yeah. There it is, yeah. It's Jonas, thank you yeah. for being with us. Thank you so much. CS50 has yeah. been amazing. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. We're back at the fair with David and Kasemi, and they're going to take us through their project. So. Hey, everyone. Um, How are you doing? So we worked on uh, an app that would um, provide students the opportunity to look at a publication, the Wa Yale Daily News, uh, on their phones? Yeah. Yeah, so starting here on the computer, uh, we're looking at the YDN website, and we find that it's kind of difficult to pull the information straight from this website. Um, and so what we use instead is, if you type backslash feed, you get this RSS feed, which provides us with a lot more useful information. Um, and so when we, we take this information, and we pass it into an XML parser um, that's built into iOS Swift. Um, and it just takes all this data, recognizes it, and sorts it into an object that is like readily usable for us. And then um, we input the data that we just parsed from the website into our app right here running on a simulator on my computer. And so you see that, for instance, this article about new staffers in the YDN. Um, we see the title, we get the author, we get the date that it was published, we get a little description, and when we click on it, we get the article itself. Um, Kazemi, do you want to talk about some difficulties in like parsing images or something? Yeah, so um, from, the, from the data that they provided us, um, on the RSS feed, it actually doesn't give us any tags associated with images. And so what we had to do is actually go to the website and run like an HTML parser on just like that straight HTML. Um, and what we found, like we had to use regular expressions um, to parse through all a lot of gunk, basically, to get images or to get um, to get videos for like YTV videos. Um, so I'm just gonna pull up this one article to show what he's talking about. Actually, we, actually, we can look at this thing. Yelly's bust a move. Yes. Um, this is uh, a YTV article, um, and we see um, right here we have it on our app. It takes a little for the video to load itself, um, and our app basically finds this by using. Uh, a type of search called regular expressions and we see here that it's searching for something called a YTV article iframe item. If we look in the actual HTML of this site, um, we see YTV article iframe and we get this link and then we plug it into our view. Yeah. So those are some of the difficult things of the back end. Um, in terms of the front end, um, which is what I was working with, basically what you're like seeing on the app itself, um, the hard parts are just figuring out how the different um, views, like the different screens interacted with each other because there's a different um, 
set of code that is uh, controlling. It's called a view controller that's controlling each different screen that we're seeing. And so just figuring out how to like pass information between the screens. Or be, I use something called a notification. Um, it's somewhere in there. Oh, it's, yeah, it's somewhere in there. Basically, you use notifications to pass information from one view controller to another view controller by basically like sending a message and you basically set up a little like program that's like listening for that message and then when it gets it, it executes a certain um, executes a certain program. So for instance, when I press this button, it sends a little message and then it moves it. So it seems like you guys have like done a lot. Um, could you maybe map out your goals? What were they? How'd they change? Yeah. So the main goal for us at the very beginning was just learning how to use um, Swift, okay. um, because that was that wasn't covered in um, during regular CS50 lectures. But we found that the the tips and tricks we've learned mm -hmm. throughout the course really helped us because um, it's just like a, a really spiced up version of C, basically. Um, and so from the beginning, it was just learning how do we use this. And uh, also, one of the big things we knew we would have to tackle is like parsing that RSS feed, the initial thing we showed you. Um, and that we kind of got within the first couple of days and we were really happy with it, but then we discovered um, further challenges that came in the form of the images and the image credit in the videos because okay. it wasn't providing us that in the RSS feed. So instead we had to do kind of messier HTML feed parser, but it ends up giving us much more power over what we could show. So what do you guys say is like the biggest lesson you learned? I mean, one of the biggest lessons is you can learn a new language and make an app in two weeks. Like it's, you have, the ability to do it, especially coming out of CSOG, where they teach you how to learn code and learn new languages, I mean, that's the biggest thing I can pull out of it, is that you can learn a new thing and you can do it if you spend just a little time. Yeah. Stack Overflow every day, Stack all day. Stack Overflow is fantastic. So any final takeaways that you want to tell the audience about? Uh, uh, Look for our app on the App Store 2018. Yes. You know, give us a little uh, cash <laughs> to take the coins. <laughs> Thank so, you so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you guys, and this was CS50. Hello, we're back here at the CS50 Fair at Yale. My name's Carter Page, and I'm here with Cecily Gao, and we're going to hear about her project, the... Megatrainer 6000. The Megatrainer 6000. First, tell us about a, bit, a bit about yourself. Um, yeah, so sure. My name is Cecily Gao. I'm currently a first year at Yale University, and um, I'm a, I plan on being a CS major. That's exciting. So tell us about what is the Mega Trainer 6000? <laughs> yeah, sure. So this, um, this project came to us um, when the athletics department at Yale has an issue with training reaction times of their athletes. And so what they want to be able to do is be able to identify, um, like be able to quantify and train the action times. And so that's what this board does. And they wanted something more sophisticated than simply a whack-a-mole game. So we have a very unique, very novel like way of being able to train and record accuracy and reaction time. Wow, so yeah. it's all about reaction time. Yes. Do you see uses outside of the athletics for this reaction time? hundred percent, yeah, actually, um, we see this being used as um, in like drunk driving simulations perhaps or like anything like psychological studies maybe like after you su suffer a concussion or injury and seeing how your reaction time slows down stuff like that so you can like be able to train be able to see quantify that kind of number wow this is one of the most popular projects at the fair <laughs> so can yeah. you show me how this works yeah sure um, so so we have several different game modes depending on what kind of athlete you are or what you're trying to train for. This current mode is called the Newman Drill. And so it's named after the strength coach at Yale Athletics. And so this is a reset button. And what it does, after you reset the program, um, it will do a countdown from like three to one and it'll be the correct color you have to hit. Every one second, all the colors scramble. So by the time you get to the correct button, it might be a different color. So you just have to go really fast. That's really all you have to do. So if you, whatever you're ready. Okay, here. Okay, Hold I'll my mic. Yeah. All right. Blue. Blue. Okay, so your score, um, 50.82, that's, that's above average for today. Hey, there yeah. we go, fantastic. And so, first off, tell me, how did you guys actually make this? Because this is pretty cool. Yeah, so um, there are like seven different components that went into this. This uh -huh. is a 
three team, three person team. Um, so I participated in uh, the coding, which is on Arduino, which is a C++ based language, um, and the wiring, part of the wiring. Um, the frame was laser cut at the C, which is a center for engineering, innovation, and design at Yale. Um, and yeah, the framing was also also like with like PVC pipe. And so, and tell me about the buttons. The buttons. So for the buttons, we actually had to um, convert them ourselves from simple like a one color button to like RGB. So to to create like something that's more sophisticated than Macamo, you have to be able to have more colors and none. none Buttons like these don't exist on the market, so we had to make them ourselves. So we mass produced a bunch of buttons and converted everything to RGB LEDs. Wow, that is impressive. Cecily, yeah. thank you so thank much you for so being much. with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Shu, and I'm a sophomore in Pearson College. I'm one of the course assistants for CS50, and I'm here with the head T, uh, TA for uh, CS50 named Stelios. Want to tell us a little bit about your experience with CS50 in the past? Um, sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Stelios. I am the one of the two CS50 head teaching assistants for this year. I got involved with CS50 at Yale during the first year. Uh, this was a thing. Back in 2015, I became a teaching assistant as a uh, sophomore. I didn't really know what CS50 was about. David came over, so they did an um, info session, session. We got hired and started training. Um, but we really couldn't imagine what an impact CS50 would have on Yale CS and on, of course, on us as uh, staff members. Um, behind me, we have more than 150 students who started out without knowing um, anything about programming and now they're showing off their projects they've made cool apps and hardware projects uh, an alarm clock I saw um, I've seen so many awesome things um, actually the CS50 fair is one of the coolest experiences I as agree. a staff member in CS50 because you just walk around and see all these students that were stressing and emailing you throughout the semester having achieved something um, they're excited about and proud of um, what else? Well, this is my last year with CS50, so this is kind of um, sentimental for me because this is my last fair. Um, I'm really excited um, that it's happening at the Yale Peabody Museum because the, the space is just amazing. Um, what else do you want to know? Did you encounter any challenges while you were being ahead, TA? Well, being on staff teaches you a lot about right. yourself. Um, among these things are, well, you have to master the material, right? You also have to master uh, your communication skills and just develop how you're going to interact with students. As a head teaching assistant, I guess that's especially important. Um, just because you're the face of the course, you want to make everyone feel welcome. You also want to help staff. Because right. um, this, uh, this experience is as important for staff members as it is for students. Uh, as a learning experience and as a... Um, yeah, self-exploration. So yeah, uh, there has been there have been many challenges, um, but we have an amazing team. We um, have worked really hard throughout the year, and we're really proud of what's happening today, which is basically the conclusion of CS50 2017 at Yale. So yeah, um, we are super excited. Thank you for being one of the hosts today. You're welcome. Give it up for Shu. Shu is amazing. Um, and thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, see you around. Thank you. Welcome back to the CS50 Fair. We have Leah with us. Um, Leah, could you walk us through your project? Yeah, of course. Um, so what I made was I made a playlist generator. Uh, the box at the top, you can type in a, any song name that exists on Spotify. Um, and below that, you have a bunch of parameters that you can choose from, like if you want your playlist to be more acoustic, if you want it to be more instrumental, um, anything like that. that you can adapt your playlist to sort of uh, match those parameters. Um, and there's also a box right here that you can check mark um, to filter out any songs that have the explicit label. So you can type in uh, any song that you want right here. Like, is there a song that you like? Um, do you want to try Heaven? Sure, sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, <laughs> uh, Shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's do the song um, Born to Die by Lana Del Rey. I love that song. And let's filter out explicit songs. To hit make my playlist, you get all the information for 10 songs that are similar to the song which I put in, which is Born to Die. Um, so like you can see like there's like another Lana Del Rey song here, there's Halsey. Um, so you get 10 songs that are similar to your input. 
plus the addition of whatever parameters you, you put in. Yeah. So could you walk us through your goals, how they change over time? Um, so originally I wanted to just have you put in uh, parameters for like if you want it to be like happier music or if you want it to be like dance music, but I figure it's it's better to have a song that's to be, have it based off of a song because then you know it's like we have a more specific idea of um, what you want your playlist to kind of sound like. What do you think was the biggest challenge? Because it seems like you've done a lot of work. <laughs> the biggest challenge is sort of figuring out how to use the API. Uh -huh. um, there's like a lot of different functions and a lot of different um, complications in retrieving data for specific things. Um, and so sort of like figuring out the ropes of how to use the API was, was probably the biggest challenge. Do you have any final takeaways, biggest lessons that you learned? Um, just in general, CS50 has been a, a really fun course. I highly recommend it to anyone who's considering it. Um, it's been really great. They're amazing people. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, just, I love CS50. Thanks so much, Leah. That was a great project. Um, and this was CS50. Hi, we're back here at the CS50 Fair at Yale. My name's Carter Page, and I'm here with Johan Todi of Fresh Car. Johan, tell us a bit about yourself. I'm a freshman here at Yale. I'm actually from Canada, and I think I'm going to be a computer science major. Wow, sounds exciting. So tell us about Fresh Car. I'd love to. So I had an idea a while back where what if we can provide a service to people who live in condos where we go into their garages at night and wash all their cars. I thought this would be pretty valuable because we'd be able to scale it and make it pretty cost effective because there's so many cars centralized in one garage. So I tried to build a site that would allow users to sign up for this. Wow, so let's take a look all at right, it. All right, I'll go through it. So this is a homepage. It says, wake up to Fresh Car. Wow. It gives you a little bit of a description of what Fresh Car is and the three different plans that we offer. Um, you can select whichever plan you want. It depends on how many times you want your car washed. This is some membership info and three facts about it. It's eco-friendly, affordable, and convenient. So say you wanted to register for an account. All right, sign me up. All right. Name's Johan. Okay. An email address. We're going to need to gather a little bit more info. Okay. <laughs> this is your unit number, parking spot number, and your address. These would be the list of condos that we've partnered with. Uh huh. Once you submit this. So let's sign you up for the pro plan. All right, pro plan. You have four car washes per month. This should take you to a checkout page where you can pay with your credit card oh, and awesome. it'll automatically... So you linked it to PayPal. I linked it to PayPal, yeah. Impressive. PayPal had a very generous API that allowed me to do this. Uh-huh. So... So now let's take me back to the website. Sure. We could just skip this step, so we're not actually going to go through with paying for it. But here's your account. These are all the details that you provided. And you can update these whenever you want. So say you get a new car or you move. You can update this info and submit it. You can also update the plan. We don't yet have a plan selected because we didn't pay for one. So it just says none. But this tab over here shows you your calendar. And this will tell you exactly when your car is going to be washed. So this depends on your plan. If you have a basic one, it's only about three times a month, pro plan, and then premium plan. And you can export all this to your Google Calendar so you know exactly when your car is going to be washed. Perfect. What are the plans going forward now? Um, going forward, I'm going to try and propose this to a few condominiums, see if they're interested. Mm -hmm. um, they would probably poll their, the people that live in their spaces and see if they might be interested in this sort of a service. And if that happens, I'll put together a team of people who are interested in washing the cars and we'll make it happen. Wow. Sounds great. Johan, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Hey, hey. Welcome back to the CS50 Fair at Yale. We're here with our last interviewee, Sarah. So, Sarah, could you walk me through your project? Absolutely. So my project is an interactive online tour of the Yale Farm, uh -huh. where you can pick a, uh, a month, so June, for example, click Submit, and then click on any of these green fields right here to see what's growing. So if we want to know what's growing in this one, you just click on it, and you see that in June, strawberries, spicy salad mix, and garlic are growing in that field. Um, the other functionality of my project is a volunteer sign-up page. So if you wanted to come volunteer with us uh -huh. um, class. on Friday. You could click there, click submit, and find out all of the other people who would be volunteering there with you. So could you tell us more about your goals and 
Hannah, what even inspired you to do this project? Yeah, so I work at the Yale Farm, and I really love it there. Um, and I talked with the academic programs director about what they might want to have as a website, and he mentioned this as an option, and so I got really excited about it. And my goal was to be able to implement the map for all of the seasons, as well as the volunteer page, so I was really excited about it. What do you think was the biggest challenge? The map? It's very hard to work with. I think not a lot of people work with images like this, um, and so it was a little hard to find code to, to have more advanced functionality. And what was like your biggest lesson? Um, um, I think at the beginning of the project, there are definitely moments where I thought, like, oh, I should pick a new idea. This doesn't look like it's going to work out. But by the end of it, just by sticking with it, it things turned out really great. Got it. And it's an amazing project. Thank you so Any much. Any final takeaways? Final takeaways? From the um, course or your project? Oh, uh, yeah, just there's a lot of things you can do even after just one semester of coding. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, this was our last interview. Thanks for joining us, and this was CS50. Well, that is it for the third annual CS50 Fair here at Yale University. We're joined this time by our friend Natalie Mello, and now back to Benedict. So, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you're watching later and you are visiting, thank you all for coming and uh, to our students for showing off their projects. We hope you enjoyed seeing a whole history of computing from the original debugging ducks back in the dinosaur days uh, all the way up through our projects today in JavaScript and C and all sorts of modern, uh, modern hardware and, and uh, programming languages. Now I'd like to pass it off to Natalie. I just wanted to say we're so, so proud of our students. Every single student just really like blew us away. Um, congratulations to everyone and thank you everyone for coming, really. Of all the projects today, we of course love them all equally. Yeah. This was CS50.